Bob the Builder is known as the innocent kids cartoon about fixing, repairing, and well building things. But what would happen if we placed Bob the Builder in a land of death and destruction such as Fallout 4? Today, we will find out can you beat Fallout 4 as Bob the Builder? The rules for today are going to be very simple. I'll be playing as Bob the Builder and what better than to only use hammers. So the main challenge today will be I must only use the sledgehammer and any variations within the game. As for armor, it is unrestricted with the exception of my helmet, which must be some form of a hard hat. Power armor is of course banned due to the raw power it has and it would make the run too easy. The goals to succeed today are beat the game with the above restrictions and also a goal I made later was to repair my pre-war home to its somewhat decent standard. I have also only got visual mods installed and will be playing on hard difficulty today. Now with all the rambling out the way, let's begin. Staring at myself in my pre-war mirror, I alter all my facial features as if I'm some god. This character I made looks nothing like Bob the Builder but it is to be expected since I suck at character creation. I then admired a hammer sitting in my house and my house was then annihilated by an atomic bomb. To say the least, I was not happy. To add to this, my wife was shot like usual and leaving the freezer, I tried to fix my wife to no avail. I then locked all the roaches behind the doors in the vault, opened the vault door and escaped into the wasteland. Now as is customary with these weapon restricted runs, the first goal was to get a sledgehammer and I had just the place to find one. Heading toward our weapon, I encountered no real trouble besides my graphics looking absolutely dog trash and this was fixed very soon, it's just because I was playing my PC version of Fallout for the first time. Arriving at Thicket Excavations not far from Sanctuary, leaning on the pump is a sledgehammer, a weapon of pure strength and power that can't fix like Bob can but it can destroy pretty good. Heading back to Sanctuary, I wept at the sight of my ruined house and this is where I made it a goal to fix my home in this playthrough. I spoke to Codsworth who then sent me off to Concord. At the Museum of Freedom, I tried to just head on smash some raiders, but their bullets beat the sledgehammer. While this weapon can one tap most the raiders, the biggest drawback is it is super super slow, like it takes 3 seconds to just take out a single raider. So I needed to be a little bit more tactical. The second attempt, I went around the side street and came out right into the Raider gang instead of running towards them and getting shot. This meant I picked them off one by one with the help of cover. Inside the museum, it was much easier because it was very close quarters combat, which meant I could take out almost all the enemies within. I got a nice ground slam on one of the Raiders who was a floor below me as well. I then ignored the power armor and minigun and went to battle more raiders. Outside, the raiders kinda ignored me, which was fine by me, and everyone went down in one swing, even Gristle who was their boss. The big bad deathclaw wasn't actually too bad this time, I kinda just hid in a building and then popped in and out, which meant with the high damage and slow swing of the sledgehammer, I was able to kill the deathclaw easily. There was also a raider with an automated pipe gun and Preston who were laying waste into the deathclaw, so I appreciate the tag teaming. I then spoke to Preston and sent him off to Sanctuary. Next up was the usual, heading for Diamond City, but we had one twist. Instead of helping Trudy with the drug dealers, I assisted the drug dealers instead. Funny enough, Trudy and Patrick took 4 swings each, which is crazy because everyone else so far has only taken 1 swing. That being said, they dealt very low damage to me and went down pretty quickly. From there, I gunned straight for Diamond City with no distractions, which is a miracle for these runs. I did get caught by some super mutants and had to run, and almost got caught by more super mutants and had to run again. To get my revenge on the super mutants, I helped Diamond City security wipe out the mutants shooting at them. I got lucky they didn't attack me, because I would be good as dead if they did. I then smashed Piper with my hammer and entered Diamond City. Unlike usual, I didn't actually do anything in the city and instead left back to Sanctuary. Here I did the most building I would ever do for Preston and I fixed up their house, slightly. I cleaned the trash inside the house, fixed some of the walls and placed a door and like 5 beds. I also set up some water supply, food and a few defensive outposts to make Sturgis happy. Now next on the list was the usual, running across the map, almost getting killed by a Yao Guai and then arriving at Far Harbor. Bet you didn't expect that part, huh? The reason I came all this way at level 5 was for a weapon. A weapon so powerful it would probably make this run easy as can be. To get this weapon, I needed to side with the children of Adam and help them out a little bit. But first, I had to defend the hull with the townsfolk. This was annoying since the gulpers would just run away whenever the few people below the hull died. 
Eventually, after getting fed up, I went to the bar to have a drink, with all these bimbos celebrating inside instead of defending the town. After I left the bar, a gulper made it past the hull and killed me. Captain Avery is so right. The hull never lets us down. So that's why the hull let a gulper come right into the town. I was killed once by the gulper since I'm such a low level they could just one shot me, but on my next attempt I got way closer to the gulper and I used a sneak attack to take it down. After that ordeal I fell off the hole and hid in a corner so I wouldn't die. After I heroically saved the town from certain doom, I spoke to Avery who gave me some caps and then went to the nucleus which is the headquarters for the children of Atom. To enter I needed to do a good old pilgrimage and drink from some heavily irradiated water and then follow some mysterious figure to a shrine. At the shrine there was a crazy amount of feral ghouls at very high levels, don't forget I'm still level 5 at this point. I tried to kill all the ghouls with no success since I had no stim facts and also no rad away. Retreating for now I went back to the town and I hit up the doctor to heal my rads. I then used all my caps to buy a few more stim packs so I was better prepared. This time at the shrine I also had a game plan to pick the ghouls one by one using sneak attacks to my advantage. This was a success and I only needed to use a stim pack a few times instead of using all 10. Inside the shrine I grabbed the idol and then I returned to the children of Atom. I was told that I am special because I saw the mother of the fog and then spoke to the leader of the children who was named Tectus. After I spoke to Tectus I spoke to the Grand Zealot once more and was tasked with hunting down a lady named Gwyneth who deserted the children of Atom. I won't bore you with the details since this is just a fetch quest but I found Gwyneth and then showed her that atoms are more than one molecule in nothing when I smashed her with a sledgehammer. Returning to the Grand Zealot I was rewarded with Atom's Judgment, a unique super sledge that is extremely powerful and was the reason I came to Far Harbor. Returning to the Commonwealth, I helped out at Ten Pines Bluff by killing some wait waiters. What the fuck? Returning to the Commonwealth, I helped out at Ten Pines Bluff by killing some raiders at Walden Pond. I got to have some fun with the new hammer, and it was kind of overpowered. I must say though that the hammer is disproportionate when in first person compared to when you're in third person. Returning to the helpless town folk, they agreed to help the Minutemen. Next on the agenda was freeing Nick Valentine. Making my way to Park Street Station, I tried to kill Swan, and I actually won in 8 hits which is insane. This was when I made the decision maybe this hammer was a little bit too overpowered right now and would make this early part of the run too easy, so I would still use the normal sledgehammer just for now. Inside the station, I could take out most triggermen in about 2 swings on average, but some took 3 or even 4 swings and those ones caused me a little bit more trouble. The big opening inside the station wasn't too bad since I was like level 9 at this point and I had enough points in skills that made me take less damage so I could usually head on charge all the triggermen. I mainly targeted people wielding submachine guns first since they were the ones that were really capable of killing me. The third person animations for the sledgehammer are also extremely cool with the extra spin there. Inside the vault I was killed one time when I was too aggressive because believe it or not 80 45 caliber bullet shaped holes could kill me off very quickly. The next attempt I used a bit more cover and got through the triggerman. Dano faced Atom's judgement and I freed Nick Valentine. Leaving the vault was very easy like usual since Nick took all the bullets and I just got to smashing. As for Skinny Malone I killed his whole crew in a blink of an eye. I would love to know what Skinny thought after I pulled some sonic level shit on his gang. I then killed Skinny who took a few swings from my meat tenderizer to sufficiently prepare for cooking. Now this next section of the run after we freed Nick Valentine was a shit show. It took about four and a half hours of recording to make and I lost every single minute. Nothing besides the audio survived. I can upload it on another channel if you guys want. As you can imagine, I'm not happy about the situation and this means the following footage is a recreation of what happened based on the script I have here. As honesty is a priority on this channel, everyone should know I did use console commands in the re-recording of this section, but it was not to boost myself in any way, it was mainly to skip certain quests and fast travel through locations in an effort to recreate the footage that was lost. So this is technically not original footage, but I still tried to be as true to the run as possible, and I did record this after I had already beaten the game, because obviously I lost 4 hours of footage here. Now with that disclaimer away, let's get back into the video. At Diamond City, I spoke to Nick Valentine, giving him all the details about what happened the day of my wife's extremely unfortunate demise and my very annoying child's kidnapping. I then stole Kellogg's key because I'm not paying the mayor shit and ransacked Kellogg's home for everything he owned. I then gave Dogmeat a nicotine addiction and went to Fort Hagen. 
The synths were not too bad here, my sledgehammer could deal decent damage, and while I was taking quite a bit of damage in return, I had more than enough medical supplies, and also there are a ton of beds in the fort for me to heal for free. I did die to a synth strider and its goon, but after I used some headshots, yes I think there are melee headshots, and took the strider down. As for Kellogg himself, I took out the synth guards first because they were closer, and then I just started swinging at him. The upside of the sledge is it's great at killing strong single targets, even when unmodified. With some extremely lucky hits and aiming, I was able to take Kellogg down with only a few stim packs, which is honestly fine by me since I was using the normal sledgehammer and not the overpowered one. After killing one of the most powerful men in the commonwealth, I returned to Nick and told him what happened. To continue the main story, I went to Good Neighbor to see everyone's favorite, Finn. I showed Finn the insurance located at the end of my sledgehammer, and then I went to help Bobby No-Nos with her digging quest. Through this quest, I will be using Adam's Judgment because the Maya Lurks are very powerful, and even the soft shell variants do take quite a few hits. Following the cleansing of the crabs in Bobby's tunnel, I went to Diamond City and freed a man named Mel by bribing security for 300 caps. Mel had created a robot which could blast through the walls of the tunnel in seconds. Heading through the tunnel at breakneck speed was not bad. Most Milux went down in 3 to 6 swings, depending on how well they blocked or which version they were. The Milux hunters were a real pain though and easily the hardest part of the run so far. These Milux could kill me in one hit if I didn't block, or slowly lead to my death by blasting me with spit. I did win eventually by dodging the attacks and letting the hunters aggro onto Bobby and Mel so I could attack them from behind and deal more damage and also not die. With the Milo hunters laying dead, I entered the strong room which, surprise, is actually Hancock's. Now I didn't care much for the chatting, I only wanted the cha-ching, so I killed Fahrenheit as she slowly stood up from her crate and then I killed the weak triggerman guarding her. I got my money and looted the train car, plus to save time I just killed Bobby on the spot since Hancock would task me with it anyways. Back at Good Neighbor, I tested Hancock's patience even more by rejecting him to join me as a companion. I then spoke to Dr. Amari, giving her brain matter shaped like a fetus, and got into the memory lounger to experience Kellogg's memory. Shocker, the institute can teleport. Leaving the memory lounger, I made for the glowing sea. En route to Virgil's cave, I killed the Deathclaw with Atom's judgment, and it went down super fast. This weapon is no joke. Speaking of atoms, I spoke to the children of Atom at the crater, and then I had the pleasure of killing another Deathclaw. Since I have always wanted to play Elden Ring but never got the game, I thought let's do it in Fallout 4. I used the normal sledgehammer to kill this Deathclaw, and since it was an Elden Ring Dark Souls style 1v1, I had to block and dodge the Deathclaw's attacks. Don't ask how you can block their attacks, I don't even know. I got hit a few times, but eventually, from my pure pro gamer Dark Soul level skill, the Deathclaw went down. I then spoke to Virgil, who told me, well, you're going to need to kill a Corsair. At Green Tech Genetics, I used my new and improved sledgehammer, shaped like Mjolnir, to smash through the gunners. Most gunners could go down in one running swing, or two standing swings. This is a Bit of a difference, a running swing is when you run at them, and a standing swing is when I just stand still and swing. This was decent enough though, considering the gunners are in compact spaces and not really in large groups, which is where the sledgehammer excels. Now the sledgehammer may be great at knocking heads and killing people, but missiles is not its strong suit. The gunner with a missile launcher killed me probably 5, maybe even 10 times before I got lucky and she missed so I could take her out. As for the Corsa, well I mean, the sledgehammer is sufficient at smashing robots to pieces, so it worked out quite well for me. I then nabbed the shiny chip off its neck and killed the gunner who decided he would taunt me. Hey. If you're going to kill me, then do it. <laughs> now to get the chip decoded, I went off to the Old North Church and killed the ferals within. I was not interested in any of the railroad bullshit, so I followed the saying of action speak louder than words by killing every single member of the railroad until I died. Trying again, I killed every single member of the railroad, but only targeted Glory a little bit more than the other members, and I disarmed her so she couldn't shoot. Inside Railroad HQ, the other members were easy to kill compared to the big shots in the church, with both Carrington and Tinkertelm only withstanding zero hits and dying to one hit. I then taught myself how to decode the Corsa chip and analyzed it myself. I think this is the dumbest workaround to killing the railroad ever, 
yeah, just read a terminal entrance and you can decode one of the most encrypted pieces of technology. Why not? Hey, actually, let's allow you to do it with one intelligence as well. Good writing, Bethesda. Next up, I helped the Brotherhood of Steel at Cambridge Station because I wanted more steam packs and chems. I was able to actually assist the Brotherhood this time instead of hiding inside a fenced area. Paladin Dance was a little confused with me being there, initially telling me to get lost and then thanking me for the assistance. I don't know what happened, but hey, it's Fallout being Fallout. Inside Cambridge Station, I found a few more steam packs sitting around and also some buff out and jet, which will come in handy. Back at Sanctuary, I spoke to Preston Garvey and was promoted to General of the Minutemen. I then spoke to Sturgis, who I gave the signal interceptor plans to, so I could get to building. I placed everything down and I didn't actually have a sensor module, but for some reason I didn't need it. I don't know what happened and why I didn't need a sensor module, but hey, no complaints here since I was not bothered going to the abandoned shack in the glowing sea. Standing inside the interceptor, I was then teleported straight into the institute. Inside, I spoke to Sean, my son, and begged him to come out and got jump scared by a father, which will be the last time he did a badass walk through a door like a boss moment. I fought my way out the institute and spoke to Preston Garvey, telling him we are now enemies with the institute. This also marks the end of all the recreated footage, so everything from here on out, there is no console commands and it's completely original. Now before we fully begin the second act of the story, I wanted to begin by repairing my house. I have done a fair amount of fallout building and quite frankly, I enjoy it quite a bit. That being said though, I am not a good builder by any means, my skills are absolutely shit. I added a wall around my home first to make sure no peasants could get in and then also some extra defense with the turrets. I then decorated the inside the best I can and added a few extra touches. This is pretty much final and I probably won't come back to this before we finish the game, but hey, I was quite happy with the trap house I had made. Now continuing the Minutemen storyline, I needed to recruit more settlements. The first one I was tasked with was clearing out Starlight Drive-In and as you can imagine, a few mole rats were not an issue, especially at level 20, so that was a super easy mission. Placing down the recruitment beacon, I finished the quest. I also helped at Oberlin Station, who were being troubled by ghouls all the way in Cambridge. How? I don't really know, and that shall remain a mystery. I cleared the ghouls, no problem, because I'm still level 20, so the hammer can pretty much kill everything with one swing at the maximum. I think the presence of the hammer at this point could kill the ghouls alone. Now, with two more settlements under the iron rule of the Minutemen, Preston recommended retaking the castle. On my way to the castle, I killed a legendary ghoul which dropped one of the most overpowered shotguns, a never-ending combat shotgun, and then I died before I could even hold the beauty. I was laughing my head off after being fallouted so hard. Making my way all the way to the same spot again, the ghoul had a piece of trash instead of the OP shotgun. At the castle, I instructed the Minutemen to use a head-on assault to reclaim the castle. Surprisingly, this worked out quite well, and even though I took more damage from Molotovs than the Maya Lurks, the Minutemen did succeed at clearing them out. As for the Queen, well, she was a whole new problem. The Queen could almost instantly kill me with her spit and, well, instantly kill me with a melee attack. To win, what happened was we engaged in a long, treacherous battle, with me standing in a doorway and swinging at her. Once the queen changed attention, I ran out and went for gold, dealing enough damage to finish the job. I then powered up Radio Freedom and got the Minutemen back on track. Still needing more settlements under the rule of the Minutemen, I set out to clear Sunshine Tidings, which was easy, especially since there was a Brotherhood Knight chilling on the roof in the center of the settlement, who killed pretty much everything. I then wiped out the ghouls and roaches that were left, and built the recruitment beacon. The next settlement was Abernathy Farm, who wanted a locket back. I got said locket with no trouble since the raiders were very, very low levels, and I also managed to duplicate the 5mm bullets I got since I left the minigun on the floor and another raider picked it up, giving me a total of 500 extra 5mm bullets by accident, which is great. The final settlement I dealt with was the hardest, Somerville. This was not only in the middle of nowhere, but wanted me to kill a strong group of raiders located at Hyde Park. These raiders were already being besieged by the Brotherhood, which was lucky for me, and the Brotherhood were just going to town with a minigun. Somehow, I still managed to get killed despite the extra support. Retrying, I focused the leader, and once he was down, the rest of the raiders soon fell too, which meant no more annoyances for Somerville, who are the most recent Minutemen members. Now, with all these extra neglected settlements under the control of the Minutemen, I was called back to the castle. Ronnie pointed out that the massive door that no one had questioned led to the old armory of the castle. 
I then ran ahead of her and went into the ruins to clear it out. In the dungeon, I accidentally blew my legs off with a landmine and then had a hands-on fight with Sarge who refused to use his modern machine guns and lasers, but rather use his fists and raw strength. Needless to say, of course, I was able to withstand the weight of a few tons being smashed into my head and was able to deconstruct Sarge, who finished the job himself with a little kaboom. Ronnie then hacked the terminal and I learned about the Minutemen skeletons in the closet, quite literally. Now it was time to construct some artillery for the Minutemen. I placed down the artillery cannons and tested them out. I can say confidently they work quite well and are very reliable at killing their targets. With the artillery in place, it was also time to defend the castle from the filthy institute synths. This would probably be the hardest part of the game for probably the whole run. I placed down a bunch of turrets, both laser and machine guns. Then I siphoned power from the Minutemen radio to power the defenses, and I was not ready to take on the institute, but we had to. Now this fight was pretty hard, I didn't really die too much, but the amount of medical supplies I had to use was insane, I had like no steam packs left at the end, and very few things that could heal me. The thing that made it the hardest was once the turrets went down, the castle was completely overrun with synths and courses. At some point I had my whole body completely crippled, and I had to slowly walk towards the courses and synths, who were able to blast me and surprise, but the cripple could not win against lasers, and I fell to the ground and died. I've fallen, and I can't get up! On the next attempt, I switched the targeting to courses, who when killed would drop steam packs, and this time I was able to use them to uncripple myself, and soon with the power of Atom's judgement, I was able to take down all the synths, and the castle was successfully defended. Now before we initiate the destruction of the institute, I went and bought a few more stim packs to prepare for the final battle. I didn't buy too many because I had a surplus of myelic eggs from the big dig, which were fine for healing. I just needed the stim packs to heal limbs more than anything else. I also did the Diamond City Blues questline now because I wanted the chems for the end mission, and I was able to steamroll all the drug dealers since I was so overleveled. At the institute, I swam through the sewer and opened the institute. On my first attempt to infiltrate, the gods of the Institute ended me instantaneously. After roleplaying as Lazarus, I then pushed through the Institute, ignoring all the laser turrets since I couldn't hit them, and soon I arrived at the teleporter. I then watched Preston and his peasant of an army teleport in, and we began the assault. The first few rooms were fine, with the Minutemen destroying the turrets and me focusing on the synths inside. Once I reached Bioscience, I killed off the gorillas and the synths within, and then I made my way to the main atrium. Here the synths were okay, I used the jet I got from Diamond City's Blue to slow down time and obliterate them. The legendary synth dropped a cool legendary sledgehammer, which dealt more damage against robots. This is a shame to have so late into the game since I can't really use it. I also had an amazing duel with a synth for like 10 minutes, with both of us constantly blocking attacks and no real hits being landed. I then saw Father performing some crazy calisthenics, hacked his terminal and ended the lockdown. I then solo attacked the generator, taking out all the synths and scientists with the sledgehammer in my final epic showdown. Then I placed the charge on the reactor, spoke to Preston Garvey who didn't exist, got teleported out of the institute, flipped the switch, caused mass destruction and proved yes, you can beat Fallout 4 as Bob the Builder. Now, as usual, my post run opinions, well, this wasn't too bad. Unlike my last three runs, the sledgehammer can actually do some work. I tried to stick away from chems today until towards the end, mainly because their strength just makes the run a little bit harder when you can't use them. Also, the hard difficulty was actually, well, a little bit harder than normal, and that meant enemies hurt a lot more. The sledgehammer also struggled quite a bit with large groups of enemies such as ghouls or when the castle was attacked, so usually I needed to use hit and run tactics to win there, but when I was crippled I couldn't do that. I think playing as Bob was pretty fun, and I already know what my next run will be, and spoiler alert, it will be on survival difficulty. Now I cannot wait to see how it goes, and if you enjoyed today's video please do subscribe. We are trying to hit 500 subs, we have actually hit 100, so thanks for that very much and your support is much appreciated. I just wanted to say uh, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. The hall never lets us down, now follow me.